assalamu alaikum class hope you all are fine today we are here to study the evolutionary perspectives of mammals and their locomotion mammals are among the most active animals they exhibiting speed and endurance in aquatic aerial and terrestrial habitats they maintain this activity in nearly all environmental conditions including the cool of night baking deserts frigid polar seas and icy winters numerous evolutionary innovations underlie this exuberant adaptive diversification in addition to hair mammals uniquely possess a set of middle ear bones for transmitting sounds to the inner ear memory glands for nourishing new bones a large brain with a unique covering of the cerebrum a diaphragm for efficient ventilation of lungs and adaptation for a highly developed sense of smell most mammals have an intrauterine vascular placenta for feeding the embryo specialized teeth and jaw musculature for processing the food and an upright gait for rapid and efficient locomotion mammals are among the most active animals the exhibiting speed and endurance in aquatic aerial and terrestrial habitats they maintain this activity in nearly all environmental conditions including the cool of night baking deserts frigid polar seas and icy winters numerous evolutionary innovations underlie this exuberant adaptive diversification In addition to hair mammals uniquely possess a set of middle ear bones for transmitting sounds to the inner ear memory glands for nourishing new bones a large brain with a unique covering of the cerebrum a diaphragm for efficient ventilation of lungs and adaptation for a highly developed sense of smell most mammals have an intrauterine vascular placenta for feeding the embryo specialized teeth and jaw musculature for processing the food and an upright gait for rapid and efficient locomotion let me tell you the tail here tail evolved in a common ancestor for all mammals and has been retained to varying degrees in all species descended from it here is therefore diagnostic for mammals except in some pathological conditions all mammals have hair at some point in their lives and here occurs in no other living organisms even those living mammals apparently without hair such as whales usually have a few hairs on their bodies mammalian hair has undergone numerous adaptive modifications for diverse uses 
mammals use hair for concealment behavioral signaling waterproofing and buoyancy their hair may serve as sensitive vibrissi on their snouts or as prickly quills perhaps the most important use of their hair is thermal insulation helping to maintain a high constant body temperature in all climates and thus support a high level of activity evolutionary history of mammals the beginning of the tertiary period about 70 million years ago was the start of the age of mammals it coincided with the extinction of many reptilian lineages which led to the adoptive tradition of the mammals tracing the roots of the mammals however requires returning to the carboniferous period when the synapsid lineage diverged from other amniote lineage mammalian characteristic evolved gradually over a period of 200 million years the early synapsid were the lacosaurs and some were herbivores other showed skeletal adaptation that reflect increased effectiveness as predator the anterior teeth of the upper jaw was large and were separated from the posterior teeth by a gap that accommodated the enlarged anterior teeth of the lower jaw when the jaw closed the palate was arched which strengthened the upper jaw and allowed air to pass over prey held in the mouth the legs were longer and slimmer than those of earlier amniotes This is the start of class Mammalia. In this picture, the lowland gorilla from the order Primates is shown here. The decline of the ruling reptiles about 70 million years ago permitted mammals to radiate into diurnal habitats previously occupied by dinosaurs. and other reptiles hair endothermy and mammary glands characterize mammals this is a member of the class synapsidae it is dimetrodon the dimetrodon was a 3 meter long plecosaur it probably fed on other reptiles and amphibians the large seal may have been a recognition signal and a thermoregulatory device by the middle of permian period other successful mammal like reptile had arisen from the plecosaurs they were a diverse group known as the thrapsids some were predators and other were herbivores in the predatory thrapsids teeth were concentrated at the front of the mouth and enlarged for holding the prey and tearing the prey the posterior teeth were reduced in size and number the jaws of some thrapsids were 
elongate and generated a large biting force when snapped closed the teeth of the herbivores thropsids were also mammal like some had a large space known as diastema separating the anterior and posterior teeth the posterior teeth had ridges also known as cusp and cutting edges that were probably used to shear plant material unlike other reptiles thropsids held hind limbs directly beneath the body and moved them parallel to the long axis of the body changes in the size and shape of the ribs suggest the separation of the trunk into thoracic and abdominal regions and a breathing mechanism similar to that of mammals the last thrapsids were a group called the cynodonts sign and don't you can see in the picture this is an other member of the subclass cynopsidae the cynognathus was a mammal like reptile that probably forked for small animals much like a badger does today the badger size animals was a cynodont within the order Thrapsida, the stock from which mammals arose during the mid-Triassic period. Some of these were as large as a big dog, but most were small and little different from the earliest mammals. The first mammals were small. less than 10 cm long with delicate skeletons most knowledge of early mammalian phylogeny comes from the study of their fossilized teeth and skull fragments these studies suggest that the mammals of the jurassic and cretaceous periods were mostly predators that fed on other vertebrates and arthropods a few were herbivores and other combined predatory and herbivorous feeding habitats changes in the structure of the middle ear and the region of the brain dwelt to hearing and olfaction indicate that these senses were important during the early evolution of mammals some zoologists speculate that the small size well developed olfactory and auditory abilities and lack of color vision in most mammals suggest that early mammals were nocturnal nocturnal means mostly they awake in the night and sleep in the day time this habit may have allowed them to avoid competition with the much larger dinosaurs and the smaller diurnal diurnal are the day active animals the reptiles living at the same time again it is a speculative but nocturnal head habits could have led to endothermy endothermy would have allowed small mammals to maintain body temperatures above that of their surrounding after the sun had set and the air temperature began to fall 
now let me discuss about the diversity of mammals here mammary glands specialized teeth three middle ear ossicles and other characteristics will be studied when we discuss about the classification of the mammals these are the characteristic of modern members of the class mammalia the extent to which all of these characteristic were dwelt in the earliest mammals can not currently be determined although zoologists disagree on subclass level classification most zoologists consider mid cretaceous mid cretaceous was about 130 million years ago mammals to have diverged into two subclasses the mammals with their highly developed nervous system and numerous adaptations occupy almost every environment on the earth that supports life it may be aquatic ecosystem or the terrestrial environment although not a large group about 4800 species as compared with more than 9700 species of birds 28000 species of fishes and 11 lakh species of insects class mammalia is among the most biological differentiated groups in the animal kingdom mammals are exceedingly diverse in size shape form and function they range in size from the kitties hognosed bat in thailand weighing only 1.5 g to blue whales exceeding 130 metric tons this is a cladogram it shows the mammalian phylogeny as you have already uh, studied about the cladogram so you must be know about the terms used in these cladograms for example the daggers what does the daggers indicate i have already told you that the daggers indicate some extinct taxa what are the daggers these positive or plus like signs present in the cladogram okay what what does this cladogram shows a cladogram showing the evolutionary relationship among mammals selected characteristics are shown daggers indicate some extinct taxa however numerous extinct group have been omitted from the cladogram the names of the 17 orders of eutherians have also been omitted until recently monotreme the duckbill platypus and the echidna these both are the monotreme these were classified in the subclass prototheria the protos is the first and the therion means the wild beast recent fossil evidence showing monotreme dentition that is characteristic of the subclass theria has resulted in this group being reassigned to the later subclass the prototheria therefore contains only extinct forms the subclass theria diverged into three infra classes by the late cretaceous period the infra class ornithodelphia ornithodelphia mean ornis is the bird and delphia is the birth place it contains the monotremes monos mean one and trema is the opening this name refer to the fact that monotremes unlike other mammals possess a single cloaca cloaca is the excretory opening present in the monotremes unlike other mammals monotremes are oviparous the six species of monotremes are found in australia 
and New Guinea. The second infraclass is the Metatheria. It contains the marsupial mammals. They are viviparous but have very short gestation period. A protective pouch called the marsupium covers the female mammary glands. The young crawl into the marsupium after birth, where they feed and complete the development. About 250 species of marsupials live in the Australian region and Americas. The other Therian infraclasses, Eutheria, contains the placental mammals. They are usually born at an advanced stage of development, having been nourished within the uterus. Exchanges between maternal and fetal circulatory system occurs by diffusion across an organ called the placenta, which is composed of both maternal and fetal issues. The approximately 3,800 species of eutherians are classified into 17 orders. Uh, the evolutionary descent of mammals from their earliest amniote ancestors is perhaps the most fully documented transition in vertebrate history. From the fossil record, we can trace the derivation over 150 million years of endothermic furry mammals from their small ectothermic hairless ancestors. Skull structures and especially teeth are the most abundant fossils and it is largely from these structures that we identify the evolutionary descent of mammals. The structure of the skull roof permits us to identify three major groups of amniotes that diverged in the Carboniferous period of the Paleozoic era, the synapsids, anapsids and diapsids. Firstly, the synapsid group. The synapsid group which include the mammals and their ancestors has a pair of temporal opening in the skull associated with attachment of jaw muscle. And the second synapsid were the first amniote group to radiate widely into terrestrial habitats. As discussed that the uh, anapsid group is characterized by solid skull and includes some of the earliest amniotes. The diapsids have two pairs of temporal openings in the skull. You can see these three type of skulls in the next picture. And these type of skulls are present in the dinosaurs, lizards, snakes, crocodilians, birds and their ancestors. Turtles have a skull with an anapsid morphology, but phylogenetic analysis placed them in the diapsid clade, suggesting their skull morphology evolved independently. These are the skulls of early amniotes, showing the pattern of temporal opening there distinguishing the three groups, anapsid, synapsid and diapsid. The first skull is showing the anapsid type of skull. In this you can see only one orbit present. And the second B1 is the synapsid with the one orbit and one lateral temporal opening in the pair. And the third is the diapsid with two pairs of temporal openings. The dorsal temporal opening and lateral temporal opening 
and with the one orbit. These are the three types of skulls present in the early amniotes and showing the pattern of temporal opening. And these are the three distinguished groups of amniotes present in the skull. The earliest synapses radiate extensively into diverse herbivorous and carbivorous forms often collectively called phylacosaurs. These early synapses were the most common and largest amniotes in the early Permian period. Phylacosaurs share a general outward resemblance to lizard, but this resemblance is misleading. Phylacosaurs are not closely related to lizards which are diapsids, nor are they a monophyletic group. From one group of early carnivorous synapsids arose the thriapsids, the only synapsid group to survive beyond the Paleozoic. Which one? Thriapsid. Thriapsid is the only synapsid group which is survived beyond the Paleozoic. With thrapsids, we see for the first time an efficient erect gait with upright limbs positioned beneath the body. Rather than sprawled out to the sides of the body, as in lizards and primitive plecosaurs. Since stability was reduced by raising the animal from the ground, The muscular coordination center of the brain, the cerebrum, assume an expanded role and the modifications in the morphology of the thrapsid skull and mandibular. This picture showing the evolution of major groups of synapsid. The synapsid lineage characterized by lateral temporal openings in the skull. As I have told you earlier, Begin with the plecosaurs, early mammal like amniotes of the Permian. Plecosaurs radiated extensively and evolved changes in jaws, teeth, and body form that presaged several mammalian characteristics. These trends continued in their successors, the thrapsids, especially in cynodonts. One lineage of cynodonts gave rise in the Triassic to Therians. Therians are the marsupials and the placental mammals. Fossil evidence, as currently interpreted, indicates that all three groups of living mammals, monotremes, monotremes are the marsupials and the placentals are derived from the same Cynodont lineage. The great radiation of modern placental orders occurred during the Cretaceous and Tertiary period. This is an abbreviated cladogram of synapses, emphasizing origins of important characteristics of mammals, shown to the right of the cladogram. Exchange groups are indicated by a dagger. The skulls show progressive increase in size of the dentary relative to other bones in the lower jaw. This data is collected from the different sources. Uh, this was all about the evolutionary relationship and evolutionary aspects of mammals. So if you have any confusion or any question, you can ask. Thank you.